So let's start. Uh, so in my session today, uh, so I will discuss some brief theory. I, I don't like to discuss theory more. But rather, I will uh, like uh, uh, yeah, discuss my experience or our experience, how uh, we build a platform by using these technologies, and what are the complexity, and how we can overcome this complexity. So that's in my uh, the overall uh, the, uh, structure of my talk. Yeah, so, uh, so if you, if you like, uh, discuss the software design, I think modularity plays uh, like a major role, right? So uh, it makes like, uh, helping uh, software ma uh, maintainable and manageable. So we all know we need a modularity. And uh, like, uh, with the modularity, we, we can uh, break down the larger system into a smaller modules, where each module can own a specific function of a large system, and, and these modules can talk to another module uh, to, uh, uh, to do some other tasks as needed. And <clears throat> so there are multiple ways you can des uh, design your software in the modular uh, manner. So domain-driven design uh, is the one like a trending and the uh, major uh, new approach uh, people discuss, use uh, in software design. Uh, yeah, so domain-driven design is, is a strategy that uh, developers, uh, 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 domain experts, uh, business analysts, or collaboration of all of these uh, uh, create models based on a core business concept of a domain. And uh, these models, insist in uh, like uh, aligning uh, design software with the core principle of a uh, business. Uh, so essentially, like a DDD, we call it DDD, it's a short form. Uh, it's like a, uh, uh, helping us uh, like a, uh, break down the larger complex system into a smaller uh, independent services. And each service uh, like, uh, can own its own responsibility and talk to uh, other services as, as it needed. And, uh, uh, and it is make easier to, uh, uh, make easier to manage because each service has own its responsibility, or the uh, service or domain or subdomain has own responsibilities. It's like uh, 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 organizing a larger group into a smaller, uh, uh, larger team into a smaller group, uh, where each group uh, owning uh, uh, know exactly what they need to do within their uh, uh, domain, and also know how fit into the bigger picture. So, uh, uh, in in DDD, uh, there are different different patterns. Uh, mainly, uh, 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 in score like uh, there's a strategic phase and the uh, tactic tactical phase. Strategic phase is like a top down. Uh, approach where you uh, divided a larger business problem into a smaller chunks, uh, and this with the very clear boundaries we call it bounded context, and these bounded contexts are very uh, closely with the uh, software design topologies. In the tactical phase, we drill down further or given this bounded context into the identify the for the uh, fine grain services and their functionality, and that will. Uh, like uh, create a very closer design, in you can convert it into the code. It's a, like an iterative process. Uh, uh, you, you normally start with the strat uh, strategic design and then go to technical design, and it's iteratively uh, to, to go through the process until you find the correct solution. Uh, so <clears throat> in this session, I'm not going to detail of uh, how you can uh, uh, use uh, uh, DDD, uh, how you can implement DDD. Uh, rather, uh, I will be focusing on the, the practical aspect and how you, how you can map this DDD design into the cloud native deployment. And uh, it's, uh, I think we had a, it's one here? I can't see. Uh, so we had a session uh, uh, last evening, uh, uh, afternoon, like a uh, both session, uh, and one has written like uh, multiple books uh, regarding that. And I recommend it read if you want to like uh, uh, learn more of DDD. Uh, I highly recommend it uh, read these books. Okay, so let's look at 
how you can convert your domain to design into a cloud native deployment. Uh, before going to the, uh, the how you can do that, let's find out the challenges. What are the core challenges you can uh, uh, face when you're converting a design, like a DDD design into a uh, cloud native deployment? Uh, uh, so basically, uh, first one is how to map a bounded context into a uh, deployment concept. Normally, services you can map it to the container, so in Kubernetes world port, but how you can map the bounded context into a deployment concept. Uh, then the, with this concept, we have the autonomous team, and every team getting their own responsibility. They have uh, freedom to uh, innovate uh, uh, within their domain or the subdomain. Now, when we deploy this, uh, uh, their bounded context into a uh, deployment, how you can manage uh, or control this activity within the deployment. So that's, that's another challenge uh, you may have encountered. Uh, then the dependency management. So like I said, each bounded context have their own services. They can talk to each other. Now a, there are multiple, uh, these kind of subdomain, no bounded context. Sometimes we need to talk a different cross domain. So how you can manage this dependency? So some, some, uh, some uh, like I said, the autonomous uh, team model, they can innovate fastly, but in the same line, they can break other dependency, uh, someone use their services. So how you can manage this dependency in the, in the deployment as well. Yeah, so now, same line, how you can discover different, different services uh, uh, with the, in the different subdomains, how, the, how you can govern. These are the fundamental questions when you have a large system. Now we have a, multiple teams working on, they are deploying uh, into the uh, deploy, uh, uh, runtime, how you can govern them, how you can discover these services. Uh, then the complexity in the scaling and resiliency. Right, uh, so even if you look at the larger system, some domain or subdomain can get a larger traffic, so we need to scale as a domain. And within the domain also, we need, there are multiple services, some services getting larger traffic, while others getting a lower traffic. How you can manage this scaling, uh, complex scaling problems? That's uh, also we need to think through when you're mapping this uh, design into the runtime. Then the infrastructure automation and uh, frequency release management. Uh, with this autonomous team model and the, all these uh, smaller teams, the, the release uh, velocity is increased, right? They can do a frequent releases. Now, then we need to have a infrastructure set up how to manage these releases. Otherwise, uh, each team can uh, release, but either SRE or the operation team need to be handle these kind of frequent releases. So they, we should have a infra setup, otherwise uh, you will be in the bottleneck in the operation side. Then the obvious security and impl security implications, right? So now uh, we, when we're designing, we design with the very clear boundaries and we know we, we can dis uh, discuss everything security, but in the runtime also we need to make sure the, that uh, required security is implemented in the runtime. So we'll discuss with more zero trust architectures. We'll, this is one of the challenge you may face in this process. Then the observability and the monitoring. Uh, now with this microservice uh, services and we are, we are dealing with a larger distributed system now. All communication over the network and to uh, troubleshoot or debug uh, production issue, it's nightmare now. So we need to have, we need to place the correct observability and everything is monitored, otherwise you will end up uh, operational nightmare. Uh, then infrastructure and cost. Basically, yes, we can start with the light, nice architecture and you know, uh, then when you get in the bill, you, you realize, okay, you can't uh, I can go forward with this. So we need to look at what are the technology we can use to reduce the cost uh, uh, with, with these uh, uh, design principles. Okay, these are the few challenges. Uh, there are more challenges, but uh, since uh, like a uh, limited time, so I not uh, um, added other challenges. Okay, so now we know the challenges. <clears throat> now let's look at how we can overcome these challenges. What are the 
practice we can use, what other technology we can use. So mainly, uh, I will discuss how you can overcome with my experience with the, how we did in Corio. Uh, uh, so this is the reference architecture. I think Sanjeev also uh, uh, shows uh, one version of this uh, architecture. So we can start the design with the domains or subdomains. Now we have the services within the domain. Now, uh, and there are service discovery, everything is we need to think through. Now, then the runtime, we need to map this domain into a, some sort of uh, runtime uh, concepts. This is where the cell architecture, uh, we, I think you have heard this cell architecture many times. So uh, I will technically explain what are the cell architectures. Uh, so we can map this domain into a cell and within the uh, domain services can map into the services within the cell. So, and, uh, uh, and then we have to implement the zero trust uh, uh, environment and then observe all these uh, uh, services, otherwise you can do the operations. So let's uh, go to detail. Uh, yeah, so uh, cell architecture is like a, uh, 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 decentralized reference architecture, you can, uh, it's a modular based uh, concept and it will go very closely with the domain driven design. And this is introduced, first introduced by uh, Asanka, the current CTO, and the uh, uh, Paul, the founder CTO. Uh, it, we, I think you can, I have put the reference uh, uh, for the white paper, so you can uh, find out more detail. Uh, it's like a, a group, like a, uh, Services set up services like the uh, same uh, services as a subdomain, and all the traffic come to the this network bound cell is uh, using a to a well defined uh, interface. So you can control it, you can monitor it, you can uh, th th there's no uh, like a, uh, unknown traffic coming to the cell. So I will explain further how we can achieve that. In the uh, uh, cell concept, uh, we we have some kind of a, like a, uh, so we have this node bound traffic where we discuss when you are, when you are talking the node bound traffic is like a traffic uh, come through the internet uh, to the your system so we call it node node bound traffic and southbound traffic is like a, uh, you call out somewhere uh, in the internet services or the out of your uh, domain. Uh, I mean, not the domain, I have to, out of your like, uh, organization. And then we have the west, uh, eastbound traffic and westbound, uh, westbound traffic, where it represent the, uh, uh, within the organization traffic, but different domain interacting uh, with each other. So all this traffic are going through a well-defined gateways. Uh, so that's the core concept in the cell architecture. You can group uh, services, uh, with closely uh, interacting each other within the cell. But if you want to uh, expose some of the service capability to the other external world or other internal uh, uh, sales running on the, within the organization, that, that going via well-defined gateways. Then, uh, so I want to talk about the briefly what is this cloud-native uh, middle layer. So in my view, uh, cloud native middleware is a set of tools that required to run your application in a cloud environment. Right, so you can write your code and maybe containerize and push it to the uh, runtime, but uh, that code or the, your code uh, uh, need a lot of other services, subservices to run in a scalable environment, mainly scalability, observability, uh, and the all the uh, like uh, security uh, 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 enforcement, these things need to implement. To use these things, we have to use sort of cloud native uh, software and build a middle layer, middle middle layer uh, layer that help your application to run in a scale uh, in the uh, runtime. Uh, so you know, so cloud native landscape is very complex now. Right, uh, within a single category, you can find a I, I think 20, 30 uh, different uh, open source projects. So it's very hard to find correct solution or correct tool. And you have to invest a lot of time. Uh, you have to understand uh, the, what, what the approach, 
and uh, like uh, closely evaluate and choose uh, correct uh, uh, cloud native software uh, to support your cloud native application. Okay, now I'm going to the like uh, uh, the implementation, uh, how we manage, how we did in Corio. These are the cloud native uh, software we use in Corio platform. So I think it's around 20. There are more, but uh, I just touch in all this uh, cloud native software and how, uh, what are the uh, features we are getting uh, 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 to in Corio platform using this uh, uh, software. Uh, so few, I think you know GitHub, GitHub Runners, Docker. Previous scans, you know, build packs. We use build packs for to like uh, uh, support multi multi language uh, build system. Uh, we use uh, Google build packs. Um, then Kubernetes, obvious, Key Vault, API Gateway. Use our API Gateway, and eBPF. Uh, uh, it's like a, a new technology or trending technology. Like uh, uh, so, it's like a, you can monitor, uh, you can trace uh, your uh, application in the kernel level, Linux kernel level, without impacting your uh, application, for, uh, impact to the performance of the application. So if you, if every request, when you are, either you are running in a container, when you are having the network layer, it's every request going to the Linux kernel, host machine, and do the routing. So with the EPPF, uh, it's called extended Berk uh, Berkeley packet filtering. It's very old technology, but recently uh, it's very popular, and it has the extension. Um, you can you can you can write a probe. You can listen to the your syscall happening in the kernel level, and do several stuff. So you can you can collect the metrics data. You can you can uh, you can reroute your packet in an effective manner. And the beauty is, you can do all all this in production without impacting the performance. It's size impact, but it's not major impact. Uh, because it's in the kernel level, it's very, uh, it is a kernel space, it's not in running a user space, because of that, it's very uh, optimal way you can do. CLM service mesh, we use CLM service mesh, again, coupled with EPVF. We use CLM CNI, again, I will explain what are the features we use. We use WireGuard. Um, Hubble, again, the observability uh, tool uh, comes with the CLM uh, ecosystem, use of EPVF as the core technology. Onnoi, we use Onnoi as a gateway, and we, have, we are having a layer seven proxies. Prometheus, to scrape out all the metrics, and then this is how we uh, give the uh, visualization to the, our end users, the, all the metrics data. We, we create a cell diagram with the, all the uh, metrics information. And open search we use for the log aggregation and flow bit. Uh, log, uh, all the logs provided by the query console is based on the, this open search and flow bit. Keda we use for the scale zero, provided scale zero capabilities. Okay, uh, let's look at how you can map a domain or subdomain into a deployment. Uh, so in the, in Corio, so we uh, so when you so in Corio we have a project that that is a subdomain or domain in the domain driven design, and when you when you you can have a multiple component or services within that your project. And when you map that into the deployment or runtime, we create a Kubernetes namespaces for a domain or project. And the services within that comp uh, uh, project or domain create under that Kubernetes namespace. So we can control by uh, uh, using namespace, uh, uh, different, different controls we can in, uh, enforce because of, because of this architecture. And so uh, we use HPA for the uh, scaling and config Mac. These are Kubernetes uh, default things we use. And for the uh, source repository, we use Git, uh, GitHub. And we use a build pack, Google build packs to build uh, uh, these uh, Docker images and push into the Docker registry. We use uh, kind of registries. And then uh, we create the we 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 do the scanning, TV scanning uh, for the vulnerability scan, and then we push into the uh, runtime with creating the Kubernetes artifact with these uh, namespaces and the other relevant uh, 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 Kubernetes concepts. Uh, now let's look at few other things. Uh, uh, 
uh, how we can enforce or implement uh, using these different technologies. Uh, say uh, we have the full subdomain or domain. We call it project, say, full project and bar project. Now, there's S1, S2 in the full, and there's a two, three services, S1, S2, S3 in the bar. Uh, now, uh, as a requirement, so say, we need to, S1 need to be exposed in, to the public in the uh, full project. And S2, S1 need to talk to S2. And then the, in the bar, bar uh, project, S2 need to expose to the public. S2 need to talk to the S3. So these are the uh, uh, requirements uh, as of for the ex to explain it. There's a cross-domain uh, net uh, connectivity. Uh, S2 in the full no, need to call to the S1 in, in the bar. Um, then we need to do the service discovery. This, these are the things we need to uh, map into the deployment. Now, so how we implement this one? So we incorporate, incorporated the WSO API gateway. Uh, so we, we have the API gateway. Within the API gateway, we, we use a NOI as the router. And with the API gateway and API management capabilities, we have the marketplace. So API service discovery using the API marketplace. And because of the API gateway, now every, so say we need to expose S1 into the public, you have to do explicitly. So then only it will expose to the public. So otherwise, the, uh, S1 ca can't access S1 from any network. Uh, then within the east-west traffic, uh, S1 in the uh, bar project expose has the visibility as an organization. Then only S2 in the full project can access S1 in the bar. So we have the visibility set. We have the visibility in the project scope then the organization scope, and the public. We have three visibility. Based on that, we uh, place the correct uh, network policies and the routing policies and the creating APIs in the API gateway uh, uh, and do the uh, runtime enforcement. And because of, now, because of this, uh, every traffic comes to a cell is authentication, authenticated traffic and also authorized. There's no un authorized or unauthenticated traffic come to the set. Then uh, other requirement is uh, we need to uh, encrypt all network traffic within your clusters. So that's the, uh, if, you are, if you are going to the compliance, this is a fundamental requirement. So we can easily uh, like uh, uh, bypass this into the user, but then the user has to do the certificate rotation, a lot of overhead, right? But we, we, we as a platform, uh, we we do a, like a transparency transparently to the user, uh, we, using the Cilium uh, service mesh, and we use EPVF uh, within that, and Wirecard is the uh, underneath uh, protocol. Uh, so we automatically encrypt every traffic, uh, port to port, port, port to port traffic. The entire traffic is encrypted. Uh, 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 the, for the user's point of view, no need to worry. We do that using these technologies. Uh, then the, uh, uh, and uh, we, we have to uh, like, uh, uh, control traffic within the flow within the cluster. Uh, if you uh, say, if the S1 want to talk to different uh, services in the uh, another domain, if you are not explicitly setting that uh, decision, they can't communicate. So we, we enforce this using L3 and L4 policies uh, with the Cilium and the EBPF uh, support. Uh, the entire uh, runtime is very secure. You can't do a, uh, like a anonymous uh, random calls. It all control. Uh, yeah, then we'll go for the observability. Uh, so the logs, like I said, uh, we, are, we are having a daemon uh, set, phone bit daemon set, every node running a uh, phone bit and aggregate the con 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 container logs. And uh, we uh, enrich this log uh, with the component name, different labels, and uh, publish into the open search. And uh, open search giving a query, uh, and we, 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 we implement our console using these open search queries. And also, we, we, we have uh, 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 a snapshot, we are getting a snapshot every hour, and we, the snapshots are like uh, uh, 
publish, uh, like upload into the different uh, files, file storage uh, with the backup, and it, this file storage are like a regional uh, uh, availability. So there are a lot of underneath infrastructure we have done to the get the high availability. So all this are uh, uh, implemented using phone bit and open search and underneath the infra uh, layer. Uh, then the uh, the capture in the matrix, uh, like uh, 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 L L7 traffic uh, metrics uh, and the L L3 L4 metrics, we we capture using Hubble uh, and uh, use and again EPPF is involved, and that's a L7 proxies uh, enforcing to get the L7 uh, uh, tracing, uh, and then the uh, Prometheus scrape out all the information, and we uh, then th that's how we uh, we can show the all the metrics information in the Korea consoles, and we have the retention period. Uh, we store this uh, 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 retention period, and then we will discard, uh, or we can back up. Uh, we are we are actually backing backing up, uh, uh, and to the do more analysis if 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 you need. Uh, yeah, then. So it's much capable. It's like uh, so. Uh, so we, I think uh, this, last week we released these uh, resiliency features. You can add a retry uh, for the your services uh, with, without modifying in code because we are running a Cilium and the service mesh uh, on Noi. We can easily do. So you can define your uh, resiliency policies. How many retries? What are the if if you are getting a final tree for a particular uh, uh, service, you can just. Uh, Configure your policy. It's so just UI. You can just uh, few clicks. You can do it. Then underneath, we we do the retry, implement retry, uh, and provide the resiliency to your services. Uh, uh, then scale to zero. So we we use SCADA, um, and uh, like uh, so we we have done a lot of improvement to the SCADA uh, HTTP. Um, I don't. So uh, we we like uh, we we are trying to upstream, send upstream to these changes. Uh, uh, we, some of the upstreams are already we we push it upstream. Uh, so basically, uh, uh, if you are not getting in traffic uh, to your services, these services will be scaled down. And for the first request, it will uh, look at look look for the deployment. If it is not there, it will hold the request. And uh, spin up the uh, your deployment, and then uh, uh, do the traffic routing. So it, it like uh, save a lot of uh, uh, infra cost to us. We have this uh, uh, we have these two uh, form of uh, data plane. We have the cloud data plane. We have the shared data plane, and we have the private data plane. Even shared data plane, like uh, we have the free users, we enforce now skill zero. At save a lot of uh, infra cost to us. Like uh, uh, the, even the free users can run production uh, grade application without impacting cost to us because whenever it's idle, it uh, scale down. Whenever it's getting traffic, it scale up. So that's okay for us. That's what how how we implemented that scalability. Okay. Uh, so let's look at the principle of uh, the brief look at the zero trust principle. Uh, Never trust, always verify. So all the traffic come to the cell is via a gateway. Uh, it's authenticated, authorized, authorized. Explicitly ex uh, verify explicitly again the gate via the gateway. Uh, least privilege access. Cell is network bounded. You they, they are, you can't talk uh, uh, randomly the services. Uh, then the you have the uh, MFA. Different uh, in API, you can have uh, uh, different uh, authentication policies. Assume beach again. Uh, if if someone uh, exploit a service within a cell, or uh, some some reason, but they can't talk to other cells, so that's that's control. So that's uh, we had to assume that and we had to control it. End to end encrypted uh, and full user and the system visibility. We have the, all the metrics, all the logs, everything is in place. So this is how we implemented zero trust within the Corio. And next is the revisit our challenges. I think now we can map uh, bounded context into a deployment with the con uh, concept of uh, namespaces and policies. Uh, autonomous team can operate independently because we have the clear boundaries, control boundaries. Uh, dependency management and the service discovery, again, via the API uh, management system. 
Uh, scaling, we handle with using Scale to Zero and the Kubernetes HPA, different different policies. Uh, then the uh, uh, infrastructure automation, we have the pipeline, uh, we have the build packs, everything is in place. Uh, then the uh, secret impl impl uh, implications, this is a zero trust environment. Uh, the observability is in place, infra cost, so we use Keda and other things. So we, uh, with this different, uh, I mean, more than 20 kind of uh, cloud native software, we implemented, overcome these challenges. So, so this is our experience, like, uh, it's not an easy, like, uh, basically, uh, so we have invested a lot of, uh, we have built a lot of expert expertise within the WSO2, we have, we have to build uh, uh, teams, and we spend like more than two or three years to build the system. But after you build the system, you are uh, like a developer velocity or application can production can go production fast. So again, this is the same message uh, as Sanjay also mentioned: uh, build versus buy. Uh, so if you have the expertise, uh, you can build the system platform, and then you can uh, improve your product velocity. Uh, velocities. But if you don't have a, uh, a system, it's very hard to do. That is uh, our experience. So one option is the platformless option. But again, this need to uh, carefully evaluate based on the uh, team and the business requirement. Yeah, this is what I want to uh, like uh, share with you. So I have uh, put uh, different uh, references. Uh, one is the platformless paper, and uh, uh, other one is the cell-based architecture. And I, I have written several papers, uh, how to use EPPF uh, in Kubernetes environment, and how to implement, how we implement a zero trust architecture, and like uh, how we do scale zero with the KEDA, and few reference architectures and implementation of cloud native deployment. Okay, this is what I want to share.